on the rest of the week and what Friday would look like. They are in the process right now of a comprehensive review of the investigation. I wasn't able to get in to meet with them, so that's why we're delayed. I apologize. I will have more for you uh, on that investigation and what Friday will look like later this afternoon. To give you an update of where we are at right now, uh, last night the curfew went into effect at 10 p.m. We have had 35 arrests. Of those 35 arrests, 34 were adults and one was a juvenile. We have a small protest right now. It is very peaceful in the 100 block of East Baltimore. Uh, it is reflective of what we saw yesterday with very peaceful activity and what we are used to seeing in the city of Baltimore. There is also a small group of people that are gathered at North Avenue and Pennsylvania Avenue. Again, that is peaceful as well, and we expect it to continue to be. We are currently monitoring school dismissal. We have resources staged throughout the city to be able to respond if there should be any incident. And again, we're asking everyone to remain peaceful as we have seen over the last 24 hours. And uh, we will be watching that. I wanna bring you up to date on uh, what has become a little bit of a story this morning and talk to you about the arrest charging process, how that's working and where we are at in that uh, process. There were 209 arrests that were made in the initial Monday night, uh, Monday afternoon into Monday night incidents. When we went into our uh, state of emergency situation and we began to affect those arrests, um, there was obviously a chaotic situation that was taking place. There were officers that were being attacked. We had officers that were being injured. And clearly we had uh, destruction of property and other acts of violence that were taking place throughout the city. So our officers, as you've heard us say, moved quickly to uh, effect arrest, to uh, uh, preserve the public peace, to make sure that everyone could be safe. Uh, it was a chaotic situation. So where we are today is that of those initial arrests, uh, uh, 111 people are still awaiting to be charged through the administrative process. So I want to be clear here. These were lawful arrests that were effected during the course of a protest. Uh, during acts of violence, uh, during attacks on our police officers and other people. There are 111 people that are waiting uh, still to be charged. If we are not able to meet the 48-hour window that we have to charge them in, uh, they will be released. We do not want to violate anyone's constitutional rights. What we will do after the fact, and as we have been promising, is stand up an investigative team, go through the vast amount of video evidence that we have, through all of the information that is on social media, and we will file appropriate charging documents at a later date if we have to do that. Our team is working to identify officers that were involved in the arrest and get these charges done before we hit that 48-hour window. So that you understand the complicated nature of that, in order to criminally charge someone, we have to have the witnessing officer, we have to know the location and the time, they have to fill out a document that details the probable cause for the arrest. As you saw Monday night, as most of you were here recorded, it was a very chaotic situation. There was a lot of moving activity and our officers moved very quickly to preserve the public peace and the administrative portion is something that we're still working through. I know there's been a lot of questions about that this morning. We wanted to walk you through that process. Again, throughout the course of the day, we will be doing briefings uh, every hour, every hour and a half as events unfold so we can try to keep you updated. I'll take a couple questions. What is the specific of the dismissal plan? The For school the schools? Plan. So we have resources staged throughout the city. Obviously, we're monitoring social media. Uh, we have extensive uh, resources that are on the ground that we have deployed into areas where we know, obviously, that students either congregate or uh, are being dismissed from school. We'll continue to look for any indication, but our, uh, our hope, our, our, our sincere hope, is that uh, we see what we saw yesterday, uh, which is people coming together in a peaceful manner, and, um, and if they so choose, voicing their concerns and their frustrations uh, in a way that's reflective of, of the city of Baltimore and what we've seen over the last 24 hours. How long have they expected to be there? The heavy police presence that we've seen, for example, at Frederick Douglass High School. So it's, it's important that we have resources in the right place. And so ensuring that at uh, areas where we know there is a potential or where we know people gather, uh, we're gonna continue to have those resources available. And that'll be evaluated on a case by case, day by day, hour by hour basis in some locations. Do you have the breakdown yet of the people arrested? How many were from, uh, from the, the Baltimore area versus from sure. Madison? 
and we're working on putting together the, the information of where everyone was from. Our primary concern right now is ensuring that we get the administrative process of the bookings completed first, and once we do that, we'll be able to break down that information for you. In dealing with this 209 arrest, is that taking the police away from the investigation? No, we had stood up an investigative team uh, very, very quickly, and the police commissioner announced that we then ramped up the, the force investigation team with the homicide detectives, with people from our uh, education and training center from our crime lab so that we could have a diverse group of talent as part of that investigation. That investigation has continued unimpeded by any of the other events that have taken place. It is absolutely imperative that we get to the answers in that case and that's what they've been working on. What's the plan for Saturday's protest? So as we've been saying throughout the course of these events, as we uh, uh, move through the week, we will evaluate on an hour by hour, day by day, uh, basis to see what sort of deployments that we need to do, where we need to put resources. We'll continue to monitor social media for information as it comes out. And uh, when we're talking about social media, we also encourage people to follow our social media. It's at Baltimore Police on Twitter so that we can provide you with the real information. And that's how we're going to, it's going to be an evaluation hour by hour, day by day. There was a subway station and a bus line that were closed today on order to police and then they were open again. Can you say why that it was? So I would refer you to uh, MTA to speak on the specifics. What I can tell you is that those are open right now. Um, that was the latest information that I had coming right, out. Right, but it was because of police. Police asked them to close them, so I'm wondering why they were closed. Okay. The again, I would refer you to the MTA for comment on that. What time will the, will the people be in the 111th be released if they're not charged? So uh, we are looking at uh, the time that people came into central booking um, and making sure that we don't violate that 48 hour uh, process. So that will be an ongoing um, uh, evaluation throughout the course of the day. Again, our hope, our fervent hope, and what we are working very hard and what the people over uh, at Central Booking are working very hard to do is to ensure that we can charge as many people before that 48 hour window as we can. With, again, we'll brief uh, within about an hour, hour and a half on anything. Um, and uh, anybody have, any, have anything else? Okay. Well, I have a question. Is the National Guard deployed on or near any school property? I don't know. I can find out the specifics. Okay. I know that we've deployed resources at a bunch of different places throughout the city that we have anywhere that there's, uh, uh, again, a, an area where people could potentially congregate, where there is concern because of uh, previous incidents of violence. We have resources deployed. We'll see you all in about an hour and a half.